everyone and welcome to Tax Treats. Tonight we're making soy sauce chicken and I'm going to be using my do-it-yourself soy... Oh, one moment. I seem to have left my speakers on. <laughs> Hopefully that works. Yes, I don't hear myself from across the room. That's always good. Always some technical difficulties. But anyway, as I was saying, tonight, maybe not. disabled the wrong speakers. All right, one moment. I seem to have disconnected myself completely. All right, so let's see. Please hold while I do my own tech support. Music, please. Um, I'll get right on that. I could sing. That might be horrific, though. All right, so let's see. Let me, excuse me while I exit stage left to turn off the speakers. Okay. Okay, I'm hearing things from over there now. So, let's try this again. <laughs> Tonight we're cooking soy sauce chicken, and I'll be using my do it yourself soy vid cooker. And if I didn't say that right, sorry. Um, it is a gigantic thing over here that you can't quite see yet, but we'll get to that in a few. Right now, I'm going to show you how I prep the chicken for cooking. Let me move this a little further over and get the chicken out. So. Lots of chicken. So I don't know where you buy your chicken. I buy mine most of the time at Costco and it comes in these lovely little vacuum sealed bags. Which if you also shop there you want to make sure that when you get them they are sealed and there is no air in the package. If there is air in the package, you need to pick a different one because that one is open. As you can see, that's nice and not open. So I wanted to show you guys that just in case. So let me put that back up. Here I have my chicken all nice and clean and prepped, which for me takes a while because I got to pick out all the little pin hairs and uh, leftover feather remnants that some companies tend to leave behind and even the most diligent cleaner can leave them behind so there's my chicken there are three thighs and four drumsticks usually i put three to six pieces in a bag if they're really really big thighs i only put three um average size size i put four if you have a combination i kind of mix and match to make it you know so that it's nice along the bottom and not overly full because you want it to stay submerged in the liquid. So I have my wonderful, yes, yes, you guessed it, Ziploc bags that I'm going to cook this in. Yes, you can cook them in there. There are, there have been statements made by the company that in soy vid cooking, they don't reach high enough to become an issue. You can also use um, vacuum sealed bags. I don't have a vacuum sealer anymore, so I will be using Ziploc. So I have some pretty decent size thigh, or thighs, <laughs> that's a thigh, drumsticks. So I'm going to put four drumsticks in the bag. Some of them are a little bigger than others because, you know, that's just the way chicken go. So I've got four drumsticks in that bag. And then I'm going to put three thighs in this bag. They'll so see pretty good size thighs. Try to put the skin down on the thighs so that the skin stays submerged because you want it nice and flavorful. See how big that is? Used to wonder what they were doing to chickens to make them so big these days. Now I know. 
It's amazing what you learn in animal science. Uh, they're actually hybrids. They're a cross, a Cornish cross between, okay, I can't remember Cornish and I want to say white leghorn, but they're a crossbreed. That's how they get that big. They're actually that way naturally. There's no genetic modification. Well, outside of, you know, breeding this chicken to that chicken that makes them so big. And they do get big, mind you. So, all right. Now I have my two bags of chicken. Yeah, I know there's no picture. I have a really goofy cartoon drumstick as my picture today because believe it or not, I don't have any pictures. So now here I have my two bags of chicken. I usually do three to four. That's why I'm using that, which is a an old Coleman cooler. So first, let's start off with some garlic. Usually I use one teaspoon of garlic granules but since i've gotten this nifty toy i've been doing a lot of garlic fresh garlic so i'm going to put according to uh all the web pages i was able to find it is one clove of garlic for every quarter of a teaspoon of granules seems like a lot but when i started to actually pressing it it really wasn't so i'm gonna put pork Four garlic cloves in each. Just reach right in there. And then go, oh, where's my knife? Yeah, I know, technical difficulties. But I can scrape it off. This works really well, and you don't have to peel your garlic. It leaves the peel. All behind. I could be a little bit more. And just take it out and throw it in the garbage disposal. Or if you have a compost container, you can throw it in the compost container. I don't have one started. Mostly because I don't have a compost bin yet. That's another show. <laughs> so. Getting pretty handy at this. I know, it's like watching paint dry though. I don't end up with a handy little handle. I end up using my knife to get the peel out. Okay, I shouldn't say that they never do. Most of the time they do. But today my garlic is being difficult, so I have to get my knife to grab it. This smells so good. I used to hate chopping garlic. So I never used fresh garlic. I always used uh, granules or stuff in the jar. be the fourth one for this I know there's four in that one Look, that one has a tail. That one should come out easy. Burr. One clove fits it pretty much. The really small cloves will fit two in it. You know, one's toward the center of the garlic clove where you start wondering where, where nature was going with that. 
I'm not a professional garlic press user yet. Give me time, guys. You don't want to use the elephant garlic in this, though. It won't fit. I think you'd probably have to cut it into smaller pieces to fit. So I'm sure if you cut it into smaller pieces, they would fit. Just a matter of what you want to do. Of course, mine have to fall apart on me and then leave tiny little pieces. It's not the freshest garlic. I bought this a few weeks ago. I haven't made very much with garlic. Bought a lot of garlic though. There we go. So tasty though. Wipe the garlic off my fingers. Oh, I'm okay, I'll just wash it off with my fingers. All right, so there we have the garlic. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, next, I will put in a tablespoon of my Kirkland no salt seasoning. If you have a preference or a different type you like that has no salt in it, then by all means use it. The original recipe I found on the web was actually Chinese spice, but I actually couldn't find any, so I just used what I had in the cabinet. So you want one tablespoon per bag of the seasoning. You think, oh, that's a lot, but not really. Um, there are other ways to do this. Um, I've done it in a pressure cooker. I've done it in um, a big kettle. And I will explain how to do it in a kettle in a few minutes. A teaspoon of chicken bouillon or one bouillon cube. I know you're like, what? That's, I, you can also use chicken broth. But I'm usually out of chicken broth because that's just the way it seems to go in my household. And uh, so I use bouillon. All right. So got the dry seasoning in let's see then you want two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar or rice vinegar not rice wine vinegar you can use rice wine vinegar you can use whatever vinegar you like i've used white vinegar and i've used apple cider vinegar not so fond of the apple cider vinegar so you want two tablespoons per bag I like the flavor of the rice vinegar the best. Use the un, un, unsweetened, unseasoned, just the plain. Lisa always used to ask me recipes and I'm like, I don't measure anything. So I actually started measuring because my husband wanted to make soy sauce chicken while I was out of town. And what is with my computer? Okay, there we go. Can't look at chat if I can't see my computer. All right, so then now we're going to add one cup of soy sauce. Don't like garlic balsamic. Oh, you use balsamic vinegar? How did that come out? I taught my sister how to make this while I was down in Florida. So one cup in each bag of soy sauce. You can use regular soy sauce or you can use low sodium, whichever is your choice. To some people this might seem a little salty and some people are on salt restricted diets. I used to be, but not anymore. Oh. A tiny bit left, I'll have to put that in the other container.
I have to try that now with balsamic vinegar. All right, and then you want to add one cup of, not one cup, a half a cup of water, which I have sitting over here waiting to be poured. <clears throat> this is in place of chicken broth. So if you want to use chicken broth instead of bouillon, you use a half a cup of chicken broth. Let's see. I think that was it. I don't actually have the recipe in front of me. I'm going by ear. Also, another bad habit I've got. Let me clean up the mess I've made in front of me. So, so far, there we go. And then use, you want to use the Ziplocs without the zipper, the uh, plastic zipper. Put it in here, shake it up to mix everything around. No, so high tech, right? And I have garlic on the glasses. All right. <clears throat> oh, that is a, the timer letting me know that chicken is ready. It, it wants to really let me know. All right. So it will continue cooking until I turn it off, but it won't overcook. You leave it long enough to overcook its chicken. So I, I remove quite a bit of air. And then when I submerge it in the water, I sque squeeze out the rest of the water. So there's one package. But you notice that the chicken is mostly underneath the water, or liquid, not water. And when you put it in the soy bee, it will squeeze the water up like that. So then we completely submerge. Then I'm going to set these aside. You don't want to spill it all over the counter. Yes, I've done that. So there we go. Two, two tasty bags of soy sauce chicken. So I'm going to set these aside for the moment. And since the timer on my soy bee went off, I will move over here. So I have the Innova, I have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so it connects both, although with this latest patch from Android, it had some technical difficulties tonight. But now it is working. So it has a lovely little app. There's the app. And it has a little timer and it tells you the temperature and you set the time and all that fun stuff. And you can control it from your phone. You can also control it manually, but I'm always all over the house, so why do I want to do that? Let me move all this stuff so I can move my do-it-yourself soy bee over here. So, here it is. Yep, can't go too far. It is a big cooler. So, I will switch to the other camera after I get it in position. Because I want you to see the inside. It's, it's kind of funny. It's giggle-tastic, as I would say. Try not to make anybody dizzy. So here it is. There's the inside. There's three lovely bags of chicken. Yes, that is a KitchenAid strainer that is my um, makeshift holder for my Nova. You can drill a hole through an ice chest lid to do this, but this is an older ice chest and it's way deeper than it is wide, so it would not quite work so well. Sorry if I'm shaking it. Not intended. So that that is it. Those are nice balls to keep the heat in. Yeah, I know high tech my dowel with my uh, clippies, but that's what it looks like on the inside, and it has the nice drain down here that uh, I can clean it with. Makes cleaning really easy. But that's it. There's the top of the Nova. Yes, it is intentionally sitting at an angle because the water current goes in a circle. And it comes out the sides. So I turn it at an angle so it hits the sides straight and goes both directions instead of just in one way. That way it's nice and hot all the way around. Let me change cameras again before anybody gets nauseous. All right, so that is my do-it-yourself OEV. 
Now I'm gonna take the chicken out and put it in a bowl to drain it. Well, bowl, casserole, pan. I've drained it on paper towels. So first out is going to be the legs, but here's what they look like coming out. See, nice and, and drowned and very, very merged. I don't know what's the word you would use. Take it off my dowel. And then I'm going to grab my tongs. And now I'm going to move my phone before it becomes saturated with juice. Although it is waterproof, not sure how it would deal with hot water. All right, so I don't know if you can see it. Coming out there. See, nice and brown. <clears throat> it can get darker depending on how much soy sauce you use or how long you leave it in. I used to so marinate it, not soak it, marinate it for like four hours, four to six hours before I started doing it this way. Now I have a bunch of hot liquid I'm dumping down the drain. Here are some fries. They're all nice and floaty. Yes, there's a lot of oil on the top, and that's going to go down the drain. I honestly could come up with a recipe for it. I would use it. I would cool it and... remove the oil. There's the thighs. I don't know how well you guys can see this. But um, yes, it has a tan. It's at 160 degrees. The USDA's recommendation is 165. But I've tried going to 162. I've tried 165. I've tried 170, and you get some really dried out chicken. I know it sounds like there's ice in my ice chest. Those are really hard ping pong balls, though. See, there's another bag. I can fit about four bags in here, and it all cook well. Uh, I did three because that's usually what I do. They're mutant chicken thighs from Costco, so I only put three in a bag. Smaller ones, I put, you know, three to six pieces in it, depending on their size. Okay, so that's draining. Let me finish dumping this out. All right, so let's see. There's the chicken. As you can see, here are the other bags of chicken. And all I do is I take the dowel and fold the bag over. And then use my dollar store clips that I got in Florida because I only see them in the stores for like three bucks, four bucks. And zippy, oh wait, I didn't get the water out, air out. Uh, that's how you can attach them. I really don't want to cook these tonight. I was going to cook them in the morning, but yeah, I would submerge them and swish the rest of the air out and then reseal them and then take them back out and put them on the dowel and then put them back in. When you first put them in, your temperature will drop from optimum for a few and it will bring itself back up to the correct temperature and then it will start cooking and the timer will start. So, never fear, they know what they're doing. So next, I'm going to take my electric skillet that I got after destroying yet another 12 inch pan. No, nonstick does not survive in this household. Hmm, let's put this over here. So, this is what it looks like now. It looks kind of like boiled chicken. Light's a little bleaching in here because it's dark outside. So, I'm going to turn this up to. Well, I'm going to start it on warm. This heats up quick, so I'm going to put my butter. Yes, butter. Not oil. Butter. It adds such a yummy taste to it. Oh, hey, warm is that way. Amazing how that works, isn't it? So I got this nice uh, Teflon and ceramic deep fryer. Not your mother's not deep fryer, electric skillet, not like ours that we grew up with. It's relatively thick. 
and I really like it and it heats up really quick. I burnt butter in it the other night just on warm. Put that out of the way. Why I have the overwhelm mirrors to put everything out of the way, but I do. So while we're waiting on that to melt, does anyone have any questions or snide comments, Deadly? This is really rabbit. Rabbit is delicious. <laughs> My sister, ooh, and Lisa is probably going, no. Chickens like to play with balls. Is that what you said? Yes, I said. I need to make my text bigger. Hey, rabbit is good. But, you know, there's house pets and there's dinner. Dinner is much different than the cute fuzzies that we have as house pets. For when they're not very nice. See, listen, it's on low and it's sizzling. After I melt my butter, I will probably turn it up. Hope that's not too loud. Usually use about half a stick of butter because most of it stays in the pan. I think I might have to put some more in it. It's the first time I've used this for this, so I'm gonna go back here and grab my butter. See, real better. Okay. I should have a kid reading my comments. Both of my kids are asleep. And honestly, today I think I'll leave them that way for a while. All right, so now I'm going to put this in the thighs in. I'm going to turn it up. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to start it at 350. Oh, it only goes to 400, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it up to 400 and put the chicken in. Skin the side down because I want that skin to get nice and crispy. I used to do it in the oven, but then it would end up drying out. So. There's really no skin side down on the drumsticks because the skin is kind of where it wants to be. But I try to get some of the skin crispy. that's loud because it's between me and the microphone when you have to go away. Look at that sound. Yummy. Now, probably the family's going to have rice with there. Me, I'm going to have some rice cauliflower with vegetables. I'm gonna put this on so you drown it. Oh, hey. I bet now you can hear me. Turn that, not really down. Just gonna put the lid on it. So, I don't know if we have any questions about my do-it-yourself project. And, oh, Pico's bringing me goodies. So much sizzle. Is it really loud? Sorry. I wanted you guys to be able to see it. Not that I have a you know, a skillet that'll go on the um, stove, so you're kind of stuck with it. But it's really nice. Hopefully this one will last being ceramic and titanium. So much sizzle, so much yum. It smells so yummy. Oh. Let's see, I'm going to, yes, I'm going to use the evil microwave. 
to microwave some rice veggies. It's rice cauliflower with peas and carrots. Need better lighting. Yeah. Not very good pictures. Need better lighting. Alright, I'm going to pop this in here to add more noise to the situation. Because, you know, I don't hear anything. Just rabbit screaming hot in here. Oh, deadly. You're so mean. Ooh, look at that. See if I can get that up here so you can see how brown that is. Just in the way. So tasty. Oh, it smells so good. Mm. Yes, there. Is that good? Can you see it? Oh no! Is my screen locked up? Can you see? I know we're having uh, internet issues this month because one of the big backbone providers had some problems. I'm going to turn this down because that is a little high. But it's working very well. It's very brown, very tasty looking. I seem to be frozen over here. Oh no. Oh, yeah. More technical difficulties. Now try the fingers. No, no, I don't think so, Deadly. Love you, but not cooking my fingers for you. Not cooking live rabbits either. That's just wrong. So while that is finishing up, I'm going to check the temperature. It should be around 160-ish. Um, like I said, USDA recommends 165. You're welcome to do it that hot. I prefer to go with 160. Let's see how hot it has gotten in here. You can also cook it in the soy V on uh, to 160 and then cook it in a skillet until it comes to whatever temperature you would de de desire. See, it's going to go up anyway. In fact, it's going to end up being at 170. But it won't be dry at all, which is the nice thing. All right, well, it's at 170. Let me let me turn the skillet off instead of up higher. And put it out here in this handy dish. Move this way. The vegetables are done. Can you see that in the pan, the plate? Does that look good from there, guys? I cooked fingers last week, I think it was, <laughs> on the pan, the cookie pan. Mmm, this smells so good. Smell-o-vision, don't you wish? There it is. If I can hold this up so you can see it. That looked tasty. So let me move this out of the way. Make squeaky noises. Grab a pan. We, yes, we use bowls where we're We eat them in bowls. I will grab one and put it in the bowl. Then I will go looking for a knife because I can't show you how nice and tender it is without stabbing it. I hear children rising. <laughs> the dead are rising. So, let's see. Oh, do you see all that juice oozing? You may not, but let me cut it. Okay, maybe I should have gotten a different plate. Like one with rubber on the bottom. Look at that. 
You see how juicy that is? Let's see if I can move it closer. See the juice dripping? So juicy and tender. I'm gonna take a bite because I can. And of course I can't cut one, but I can take one. Let's see how it tasted with fresh garlic for a change. That is really, really good. So, I hope you like the show. I hope you like the recipe. Give it a try at home. I'm just going to tell you how I used to do it. Once upon a time, I used to use this gigantic pedal, kettle, pedal, uh, kettle, and I would fill it to about here with soy sauce, um, chicken bouillon, water. I didn't measure the seasonings. And then rice wine vinegar, or rice vinegar. And then I would bring it to a boil. Then I would place the raw chicken in, skin side down, and weight it with a plate. And put the lid on it and let it sit for four to six hours. The longer the better. It would mostly cook all the way through, but then I would take it out and put it in the oven to finish it because the because it wasn't constantly circulating and hot, it would cool off over the course of the day. But it would still come out very good, and you don't have to have a soy vid to do it. So you just need a really big kettle, and you would uh, figure the ingredients per pot because you know you'd want to make sure your chicken's submerged. And you would still end up needing a plate or something heavy on top of it to hold it under the water. Well, not water, marinade. Otherwise, it's going to float and you'll have white spots on your chicken. This came out nice and evenly colored, evenly marinated. Um, I like this method better because I can set it and forget it until the beep, beep beeps, the timer goes off. And then take it out and just finish it in the frying pan and have very tasty, crispy skin. And my family loves it. So you guys should try it at home and hope it works out as well for you as it does for me. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them before I... Yes, yes, I do know how, how to handle a lot of meat. It comes with cooking. Instapot works too. Yeah, it's just a fancy brand name um, pressure cooker. I cooked it in my pressure cooker, which is, like I said, it's just an Instant Pot without the label Instant Pot. But it's very, very yummy. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you guys got some good ideas. Hope you want to go home and try it. Um, come back next week and see what kind of goodies I have for you on tax treats. This is Destiny. Bye-bye, everybody.